days in uh, school off, and you can email your teachers from your iPod and your iPhone. Word spread about the app, and Ozair became a middle school yeah, rock you're not star. Picking up. In the hallways, tell. kids patted him on the one back. Line they gave him high fives. Most of them wanted to know how he did it, so they could build mobile apps too. In fact, the school district's chief technology officer was so impressed, he asked Ozair to make apps for other schools. You agreed? Yeah, I did. Are oh, they yeah, a kid. A lot. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's a lot, but they are they baby. A school system spokesman said they haven't money. yet nailed down how much he'll be paid. Oh. But they'll be sure to follow all child labor laws. Oh, yeah. Ozair is okay with this odd little arrangement. So I'm working two jobs, being a student and working with them. <laughs> Isn't that kind of bizarre? Yeah, it's no. kind of weird, but I'm not really. So. Ozair is part it's of a growing make trend the app, kids kid. turned entrepreneur. For instance, the 8th grader who this built Bubble Ball, an app young. that managed to knock Angry Birds out of the top app slot. It's been downloaded more than 9 million times. Many young developers are hoping to nail the next big hit and make some money. Say you build an app for an iPhone or iPad. You charge 99 cents per download. Then, if a thousand people buy it, that's 700 bucks after Apple's 30% cut. Free apps make money through ads. But not all kids do this to get rich. They want to build something fun, like this. It's a musical app that changes your voice. Stanford professor Gu Wang created it and other popular musical apps. He says more kids are learning to build apps now because, well, they can. It's really not that hard. All the tools are there, and they don't cost a lot of money. Wang says platforms like Apple's online app store have made it easier to bring a product to consumers. And he adds, lots of kids thrive on exploring uncharted territory and taking risks, which makes them fearless entrepreneurs. Overall, the market is not really moving at the moment. Carolina Milanese analyzes the app industry. Mobile app sales are expected to double next year to $17 million. And Milanese says tech-savvy kids are poised to move in on those profits. These devices are used in school. They're part of their everyday life. And it's both play and work for them. And for all those kids at Barry Middle School who wanted a piece of the action, Ozair started an app club. For NPR News in Hoover, Alabama, I'm Gigi Duban. Here's a story about the strange meeting of old and new technology. A Wisconsin company will burn your old music CDs to a digital file, recycle the cases, and even let you resell the album online. As Teresa Shipley, Wisconsin Public Radio reports now, it's part iTunes, part garage sale. Carter Hooper had a problem. The 51-year-old from New Orleans had spent years lugging around his yeah. collection of 900 CDs. Minnesota, 1947, car number 2619. And now you can access all of the CDs online through Murphy's website. The site also lets members have their own personal store where they can sell or trade albums from their collections. Murphy takes a 30% cut from a sale, but trades are free. Cooper says he's already netted about $50. Co-founder Preston Austin admits it's not easy to describe it. Sort of like eBay or Swap.com combined with iTunes or Amazon Music Locker. But unlike iTunes, Murphy still deals in real, physical CDs. You just never see them. This the guy's clearly fascinated by this. Tens of thousands of CDs ordered for yeah, easy right access. Despite those big numbers, the warehouse is actually smaller than most living rooms. It's yeah. the central space in Murphy's office suite on the eighth floor of the downtown 2000s. bank building. Inside the warehouse are two silver utility Minnesota. shops. Each one is packed top to bottom. Oh, exhaust from this thing is horrible, boxes, I'll tell you that much. Boxes. Fucking A. Inside each box are dozens you get of fucking loaded off this air coming off this car. The plastic cases are nowhere to be seen. That's 
because they're valuable. Mercury recycles them, making $1,500 a ton. And Austin estimates they'll recycle 100 oh. tons of cases in the next year. All those CDs come from members like Carter Cooper. Want to breathe. Some are using Mercury to sell or trade their CD collections. Cars choking Others me. Music, which costs a dollar per album to download. And for $12 a year, some are just storing their CD collections. Matt Yonkel is Murphy's co-founder. In the background, we've got all these CDs that are sort of shifting ownership in our purpose. Everything comes back to ownership of real physical property. We just make it really easy to preserve that ownership without having a box of plastic discs in your closet. According to the CD Recycling Center of America, a lot of people struggle with their CDs. Preston Austin estimates in the U.S. alone, there are about 15 billion used CDs just sitting around in basements and bargain bins, but no longer in Carter Hooper's basement. He was one of Murphy's <coughs> first customers and says now he's hooked on the convenience. For an old school record store inside, it's just an ideal way to have a cover for me. Digital record store, online CD library, need this shit. remote garage it's not like sale. You can sit on it. Murphy may be hard to define, but that won't stop it, it from expanding. Makes this shit more right now, it just accepts CDs, get around. but it might soon take vinyl. And Murphy hopes to someday branch out to comics, Turn off magazines, your fucking blinker. even books, and become the one-stop shop for your online <laughs> media library. For NPR News, I'm Teresa Shipley in Madison. Support for all tech considered comes from Carbonite, providing automatic and encrypted online backup solutions for home and small business computers. Learn more at Carbonite.com. This is NPR News. Support for NPR comes from NPR member stations and from Shell, helping deliver natural gas worldwide to meet growing energy needs. Learn more at shell.us slash let's go. From the investment firm of Raymond James, wealth management, banking, and capital markets. Learn more at lifewellplan.com. And from CenturyLink, providing broadband entertainment and voice products to Americans coast to coast. Learn more at CenturyLink.com. This is NPR. This is 89.9 KCRW. It's 329. Still to come, a climate change activist who's going to prison takes one last wilderness trip before getting locked up. That story after the news on 89.9 KCRW. KCRW sponsors include Memorial Healthcare IPA. Your doctor, your hospital, your choice. Senior advocates, personal care coordinators, and 200 primary care physicians providing the right care at the right time. Or at mhipa.com slash care. Support comes from the theater at Boston Court in Pasadena. L.A. Stage Times calls Boston Court the most lavish 99-seat venue in Los Angeles. L.A. Times says Boston Court has raised the bar for L.A.'s smaller theaters. On stage now is The Dinosaur Within. The disappearance of dinosaur footprints in Australia triggers a series of mysterious events, bringing together a forgotten movie star, an aboriginal elder, and a grieving father on an epic journey yeah, so of transformation. This one. Tickets at bostoncourt.org. Good afternoon. Sigler canceled in Studio City northbound on the one. No, make that southbound, excuse me, southbound 101 at Lankersham. All lanes cleared, though you are backed up to the Ventura Freeway. This is due to an earlier collision. The eastbound 101, that's slow from Coldwater Canyon. Sigler on Sepulveda Pass continues northbound 405 due to that Sigler traffic's terrible from LAX up to the valley. Right now, traffic the drive is time terrible is just everywhere, up, bitch. up to an hour and 20 minutes. Sorry, but. PR News in Washington. I'm Barbara Klein. The Yemeni branch of Al Qaeda confirms a U.S. strike killed American born cleric Anwar al Awlaki. And as NPR's Peter Kenyon reports, the group is vowing to avenge his death. The U.S. drone strike killed al Awlaki late last month in eastern Yemen. He was the best known figure in Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, thought by Western counterterrorism experts to be the most potent branch of Al Qaeda. In a web statement monitored by the Site Intelligence Group, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula said, quote, the blood of al will not go in vain, and that other militants would retaliate soon. al was implicated in several attacks and attempted attacks in the U.S., and was considered an inspirational figure and successful recruiter who graduated to the planning of operations. Peter Kenyon, NPR News. In Libya... 
Transitional government forces are battling Muammar Gaddafi loyalists in the center of Sirte, Gaddafi's hometown. As fighters crouch around the damaged convention center, desperate civilians are trying to flee fierce street fighting. The leadership of the Transitional National Council says it will declare Libya liberated when its forces seize control of Sirte. In the Pacific Ocean, Hurricane Hova is spinning toward Mexico. And Dennis Feltgen of the National Hurricane Center says warnings have been issued. Oh, Hurricane so Hova much time spent idling. Hurricane, a major hurricane which is aiming at portions of southwest Mexico at this hour. This is ridiculous. The we do not need to be spending our time sitting here waiting. Southwest of Manzanillo, Mexico. Hurricane conditions are could expected be moving. to arrive by tomorrow afternoon. Residents are being urged to take immediate precautions. On Wall Street today, the bond market was closed for the holiday, but in stocks, the Dow closed up 330 points, nearly Seriously, 3%. Seriously, motherfucker, you want to go left and you want to go left over even more just because 80. you're an asshole? This is NPR. Good afternoon. For KCW, I'm Aaron Broy. In a massive overhaul ahead of the full debut of federal health care reform, Los Angeles County has started signing up hundreds of thousands of uninsured residents oh, for free Jesus. medical care. In 2014, millions of uninsured Californians will become eligible for federally funded Medicaid. L.A. County is paying half the cost of Healthy Way L.A. Until then, all the feds cover the other $300 million. Coptic Christians in the U.S. are preparing for three days of fasting and prayer starting tomorrow to support Egyptian, Egyptian Coptics attacked by Egyptian security forces as they try to peacefully protest. Coptics in Detroit and Southern California are among those heeding the call of their spiritual leader, Pope Shenouda III. The Coptic Orthodox Diocese of Los Angeles will protest outside the West L.A. Federal Building this Sunday.